yesterday, we learned about the properties of logarithms. <clears throat> Today, we're going to be using some of those properties and some other properties as well. In order to solve exponential and logarithmic equations, take a moment and write down the title and objective of today's lesson. OK. So today we are going to solve exponential and logarithmic equations. So we're going to start with kind of a big idea statement. This is the general, this is kind of a summation of what we're learning today. Some exponential equations can be solved by rewriting both sides with a common base. For others, rewriting the equation using the logarithms should be an I. can be more efficient. Okay, so what am I talk talking about when I talk mean rewriting with a common base? What does it mean for What does that mean? Well, this is referring to this fact. If two powers share a base, and are equal, then their exponents are equal. This makes sense. I have two powers. They have the same base. And if I know the two powers are equal overall, then that means that if they have the same base, they must have the same exponents. Or rather, they have this, their exponents are equal. So let's write this out in math ease. So let's say we have two powers, and they share a base. Say b to the x and b to the y. So this is saying that if b to the x is equal to b to the y, then these two are the same, which means that x and y must also be equal. Then x equals y. 
Now this is handy because it gives us a way to essentially cancel out an exponential as long as both sides are a power. Let's go ahead and try this in practice. Will anyone yell at me if I take this away? No yelling? OK, let me just erase a whiteboard here, get it ready. Maybe I should go to the classroom and get a few more. I've been finding myself over running a little short. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's try this in action. See, so got a few people coming in. Need to adjust attendance. I have someone who's someone in here whose name is a number crunch. Need to change your name to your real name. Okay, so let's say we have O. Seven to the three X equals seven to the X plus ten. So, well, we know from uh, we know from the uh the previous page there that if b to the x equals b to the y then x equals y. Fair enough? So, this to that, so these both share a base, which means that we can essentially ignore the base and rewrite it as 3x equals x plus 10. And now we can solve it like we would any equation. Let's see, let's gather all the x's on one side. 3x take away, a, if I have three x's and I take away an x, I have two x's left. Half of 2x is x, half of 10 is 5.
Easy peasy. Now, this particular situation was easy because the bases started out common. Both of them started with a common base. Let's try another one. This one's going to be a little bit uglier. Let's say one half to the x plus 7 equals 4 to the 3x. Now, these two exponentials obviously don't have a common base. 1 half is not the same as 4. These are different numbers. But we can rewrite both sides so that they are, are exponentials with common bases. I can do this by recognizing that 4 is 2 squared. So the right side here, this 4, is really a 2 squared. On the left side, 1 half is 2 to the negative 1 power. Let me write that a little bit better. x plus 7. OK. Now, these still don't have common bases. But now we can use the power of a power property, which you will, you'll recall is that b to the n to the m is the same as b to the n times m. That is terrible. Let me try that again. The power of a pro power property states that, I'll write it over here, b to the n to the m is equal to b to the n times m. So I can multiply these exponents together. Negative 1 times x plus 7, you would need to distribute negative 1 times x is negative x minus 7 equals 6x. Ah, now look at that. Now they have common bases. Which means now we can ignore the bases and just write it as negative x minus 7 equals 6x. Now solve it like normal. Gather all of your x's on one side. 6x plus x, 7x, divide by 7, negative 7 divided by 7, is negative 1. So x is negative 1. And there we go. So <clears throat> if both sides of your equation have a common base, then you can just ignore the bases, write it out. If the bases can be rewritten as the other, then rewrite them so that you have exponentials with common bases, and then you can just ignore the bases and take it from there. OK. <laughs> now I would like you to try it yourself. Will anyone yell at me if I take this away? OK. So I'm going to put two equations down for you to solve.
solve for me. Two to the X equals two to the let's say two X minus seven. I would also like you to solve. Twenty five to the three X equals one hundred and twenty five to the x plus 2. I'll give you about one minute to tackle both of these. All right. So here, two to the x equals two to the x minus seven. Or yeah, or two to the two x minus seven. These both have a common base. So I can just ignore the bases here and write it as x equals 2x minus 7. Take it from here. Uh, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. These cancel. x minus 2x is negative x equals negative 7 divided by negative 1. And we have x equals 7. Easy. Now this one's going to be a little bit more complicated. These don't have common bases, but I can rewrite them so they do. 25 is 5 squared. 125 is 5 cubed. 5, time, five, five times 5 is 25. 5 25s is 125. So now these bases are not quite the same. Five squared and five cubed are not common, but I can use the power of powers property, multiply two by three X to get six X. Multiply three by X plus two to get three X plus six. There we go. Now they have common bases, which we can chop off.
subtract 3x. 6x minus 3x is 3x equals 6. Divide both sides by, or not divide both sides by 6. I'm crazy. Divide both sides by 3. And we have x equals 2. Look at that. Not so bad. Okay, so will anyone yell at me if I take these away? Okay. So, now this method works really well. The problem is that it doesn't always work. We, uh, it isn't always easy or even possible to rewrite both sides so that they have a common, uh, to rewrite both sides so they have a common base. In that situation, you're going to need to use some other techniques. So, for example, what if we have something like what if we need to solve something like I don't know, uh, 10 equals 3 to the x power. Well, unfortunately, I cannot write 10 as a power of 3, and I can't really rewrite this. I can't rewrite these easily so that they have the same base. But what I can do is we can take advantage of some facts that we learned in a pre that we learned in previous in uh, previous lessons. <laughs> <coughs> so, sorry about that. We can cancel the exponential by taking advantage of a fact we learned previously. Now, we learned previously that exponentials and logarithms are inverses. Now, what does that mean? It means if you plug an exponential into a logarithm, they'll cancel each other out. So, 
a log base a of a to the, let's say, u power will cancel out, leaving us with u. By the same token, a to the log base a of u is u. So here we have a 3 to the x power. We need to cancel it out so that we can have the x just sitting on its own. We can do that by taking advantage of this. We'll stick both sides inside a log. And I'm allowed to do that. I can do whatever I want to an equation as long as I do it to both sides, as long as it maintains equivalence. So log base 3 of 10, I don't know what that is. But on this right side, I do know that these cancel. Leaving us with x. And that's about as far as we can go. OK, now, try it yourself. Let's say 6 equals 10 to the x plus 1. Solve this for me. I'll give you about one minute. All right, so this one, I can't really rewrite these with, I can't really rewrite these as exponentials at the common base, but I can cancel out this exponential by sticking both sides inside a log. Now, this is a log of base 10, which of course is the common logarithm, so we don't write, down, write it down because log base 10s are used so much. 
log of 10 to the x plus 1. Now on the right side, the log and the exponential cancels, leaving just the contents here, x plus 1. Now we're not actually done yet. x isn't on its own. So we can subtract 1 from both sides. And we have log of, log of 6 minus 1 equals x. And there we go. OK, well, anyone yell at me if I take this away? Huh. Okay, so there's still one last situation that we'll look at. What if What it, so the method that we just looked at works really well when we have an exponential on one side but not the other. What if we have an exponential on both sides that really can't be written easily as a common logarithm? In that situation, or it can't be written with a common base on a common logarithm, my apologies. In that situation, situation, we're going to need to use a different fact, similar to the one we learned earlier. So if a log of base b of x equals a log with a base b of y, then x equals y. Just makes sense. This is if we have two logarithms that I know are equal to each other and they have the same base, then their contents must also be equal. That's the only way that these two can be equal to each other. So, <clears throat> so we can use this. Let's try it out. Uh, sorry, sneezy. Use this fact to solve 3 to the x plus 1 equals 5 to the x. OK, so 3 to the x plus 1 equals 5 to the x. Cool. What can I do here? How can I tackle this? Well, what I can do is if I just stick both sides inside a logarithm, now I'll know that these then that is a thing I'm allowed to do. OK, so let's say log base 10. We'll stick both sides inside a logarithm. Log base 10 of 3 to the x plus 1 equals log base 10 of 5 to the x. I know that this is something I'm allowed to do because of this fact. So great, how does that help us? Well, this actually helps us because of something we learned the other day. <clears throat> if we have a log of a power, we can pull the exponent out of the log. So I can pull these exponents 
out of the log. Now we have x plus 1 times the log of 3 equals, oh, need to pull that x out, x log of 5. Okay, now this might not see, it, this might still look kind of ugly, but the thing is, is that now these x's are outside of the log which means that now I can combine them together using any method, I any method I want. So let's do it. Now, first we should really distribute this so that we don't have any more, any of these parentheses mucking things up, getting in the way. Let's distribute this log in. So now we have, well, x times log of three is x log of three. 1 times log of 3 is log of 3. Giving us x log of 5. OK, now. So now we have x terms here and here. We should get them, those all gathered on one side. I'll go ahead and subtract x log 3 from both sides. These cancel. <clears throat> hmm. Log of three equals x log five minus x log three. Okay. Both of these are being multiplied by x, which means I can factor out that x. So now I have x log. You know what, I'm gonna rewrite on the same line. That makes my life a little easier. So I can factor out that x, leaving us with x times log of five minus log of three. If I distribute this in, I'll get back to where I was. Divide both sides by this stuff. OK, this stuff all cancels. And we are left with x equals log of 3 all over log of 5 minus log of 3. So x is isolated, which means that we are done. Whew. Yeah, it's a little bit ugly, but <clears throat> Life is like that sometimes. And we got it. And notably, this is something that is easily plugged into a calculator. X is on its own. And, and these logs are all logs of base 10. So I can just use the log button here log of 3 divided by log of 5 minus log 3. Close that parenthesis. There we go, 2.15. Not too bad. And once again, time for you to try it yourself. Will anyone yell at me if I take this away?
Okay. <clears throat> now it's time for you to try one yourself. using the exact same method that we just used, I would like you to solve 2 to the 3x equals 7 to the x plus 1. Give it a shot. I'll give you about a minute. Okay, so I cannot rewrite 2 and 7 so that they have a common base, unfortunately. But I can stick both of them inside of a logarithm. Let's say log of 2 to the 3x equals log of 7 to the x plus 1. Now we can use that handy-dandy property that we learned yesterday to pull out these x terms out of the insides here. So now we have 3x log of 2 equals x plus 1 log of 7. Distribute this in here. So now we have 3x log of 2 equals x log of 7 plus 1 times log of 7 is just log of 7. OK. Now, we need to have all of our x terms on one side, so I'll subtract x log of 7 from both sides. These cancel. 3x log of 7 minus x log of 2 those don't simplify nicely. 2 and 7 aren't the same. So we have 3x log 2 minus x log 7 equals log of 7. All right. Both of these have an x that I can pull out. We have x times 3 log 2 minus log 7 equals log 7. 
finally, I swear we're almost done. Divide both, both sides by 3, log 2, minus log 7. Whew, almost done. 3, log 2, minus log 7. These cancel, and we are left with x equals log of 7 all over 3 log 2 minus log of 7. And there we go. It was a bit of a journey to get there, but we got there. Not as easy as the other ones. And that is also where we're going to leave off for today's lesson. Today, we learned how to simplify... <clears throat> Sorry. Today, we learned how to solve exponential equations. Sometimes we can solve them by giving them both a common base. Other times, we can solve them by rewriting them using logarithms and then using the properties of logarithms to turn it into something that we can handle. All right, so I know we're a few minutes early, but I think that's everything we need to cover today. So you guys have a few, you have a few minutes grace. So I will see you guys tomorrow. I, uh, the check for understanding is uploaded and ready to work. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Get that check for understanding done and uh, bye-bye.